Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Our coverage of the sport today takes us to Hoboken, New Jersey. We go to the Nike hot seat. Sitting there is Hudson Taylor, three-time NCAA All-American for Maryland, a former coach. And uh, he joins us now from his offices of Athlete Ally. And he is uh, Hudson Taylor. Hudson, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me. I got uh, a Facebook announcement that you've been asked to do something very special, and that is to be the guest editor of uh, the Washington Blade. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So each year, the Washington Blade does a sports issue which covers LGBT issues in athletics. And so they've reached out to me to help cultivate some um, articles and conversations about what's going on in the sports space. So in my role as the editor, I get to kind of decide what topic matters we want to talk about, uh, really trying to lay it out in three tiers of conversation. One about the successes that we've had in sport, so trying to celebrate the victories that have take pla taken place. You know, in the last year, we've seen more athletes come out, more allies speak out, more teams and leagues take a stand than at any other time in, in history. So there's a lot to be proud of. Um, and then two, talking a little bit about the challenges that continue. Um, you know, in the sport of wrestling, we still don't have oh, well, they're, they're, a little bit of noise they're, here. They're applauding you even as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. I was saying, um, in the sport of wrestling, we still don't have uh, an active open the gay athlete, which is not true with the statistics of things. So we know there's something about um, wrestling culture, about sports culture in general, that is less than what we know it should be. And then finally, um, talking a bit about the solution. So what can your everyday coach or athlete do to make their sports team or community more inclusive? More inclusive, a little more friendly, a little more welcoming. It's uh, not just wrestling, obviously, it's, it's all sports. And that is uh, perhaps the greater story. So it's the third annual sports issue of the Washington Blade that'll come out August 21st. Our uh, special guest today, uh, an old friend of ours, Hudson Taylor of Athlete Ally. Let's talk a little bit about Athlete Ally. This is a nonprofit that, that you started. Yeah, yeah. So I started it actually right after graduating from Maryland. Um, you know, so for those of you who don't know, my senior year, uh, I started wrestling, I started the season wearing uh, an equality sticker on my headgear and um, one, of my, one of my coaches, one of the, uh, the club coaches at Maryland at the time pulled me aside and was like, hey, you know, would you do an interview about why you're wearing this sticker? And I was like, sure, of course, no problem. Um, and in, in, as a result of that interview, I had about 2,000 emails from closeted athletes from across the country who reached out and said, Hudson, I hear you speaking out, and now I feel like I can join a sports team. Now I feel like I can go into the locker room and not be afraid. And so Athlete Ally really started with this realization that my voice as an athlete could really make people's lives a lot better. Um, and having wrestled since I was six, I want everybody to have an equally positive experience in the sport that I love. So by using my voice as an ally, I'm hopefully, hopefully giving more people a relationship with the sport of wrestling and with athletics in general. So with Athlete Ally, they're really, um, you know, we're all about educating and mobilizing allies. So those who are, are not, uh, maybe don't identify as members of the LGBT community, but can certainly do more to make their sports community more inviting. Um, and there are two ways in which we operate. One is on education, and so that's training people, uh, letting them know the best practices to create welcoming sporting environments. And then the second is uh, public awareness and mobilization. So we run campaigns. We have 130 professional athletes who are ambassadors of the organization. Um, we get them to tweet things. We ghostwrite op-eds for athletes. So really just trying to use the voice of sport to make the world a better place. Hudson Taylor, our guest. Um, there, there is some, I don't want to say conflicts, but it's, they, I guess uh, people may not know this about you. You're married. Yes. Uh, you are from a long line of, uh, of, of Christian missionaries, uh, people who have been giving you know, their life to advance the cause of Christianity and, and uh, its teachings. And, and so being a openly straight uh, individual, it would it would seem to be uh, odd that you would organize. Uh, perhaps for some, it would mm. seem to be odd that you would organize an, 
or have an organization, head an organization, that uh, would be an advocate, if you will, uh, for openness and friendliness. Can you? How does this happen? How did this happen for you? Well, I, I see a lot of parallels between the work that I'm doing today and past social justice movements. Um, you know, when I think about discrimination or be, people being treated less than, um, I think there's a lot of common threads in one, the root of it, but also the impact of it. So, you know, you think about when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in baseball, baseball was worse off because of that discrimination. And so I think the same principles and values that made baseball better by inviting Jackie Robinson and other athletes of color to break the, those barriers, um, you know, those same ideas, those same attitudes are things that we should be talking about and learning about today when it comes to an athlete's sexual orientation. You know, diversity is beneficial to athletic success. And if we have a sporting environment that isolates, excludes, or neglects certain segments of the population, we're really doing a disservice to what we're trying to accomplish as coaches and as teams. And so, um, yeah, I guess on the surface you may, it may not make sense, but, <laughs> but as somebody who has a real profound love of sport, I think that we are going to be the best sporting communities when we are the most united and any amount of homophobic, sexist, racist, ableist language, it divides us and it makes our teams um, less than what I think they, they could or should be. Well, well done, Hudson Taylor. Well done. I, uh, that, that perhaps is the, uh, uh, the greatest answer I could have hoped for. Uh, for that question. Now, let's talk a bit about how you're putting forward your message, putting forward the, the, the greater good, if you will. Sure. And I think it's, I think what you said, or to paraphrase anyway, I think what you said is, uh, you know, for the betterment of mankind, not just sport, mm. but can't we all just get along, right? Uh, so you, you speak to groups, you, you travel and represent, you, I think, which Olympics was it? China? The Beijing Olympics? Uh Sochi Winter Olympics. Okay, the Sochi Winter Olympics. And uh, you have been photographed with some of the greatest athletes in the world. Uh, I recently saw pictures of you uh, with a couple of my favorite comic uh, magician uh, and legends, really, of the sport now, or the uh, entertainment world, Penn and Teller, uh, right there on Broadway, which is not too far from your offices and your home. Uh, you're welcomed in, into a lot of different situations, in part because of your views. Hmm. Yeah, well, I, I think that I've been very specific about how I frame the message of Athlete Ally and, and the education work that we provide. Um, I try to make it very clear that, you know, at the end of the day, there, on any social justice issue, there will always be a spectrum of opinion, right? Nobody's ever going to have complete agreement on anything. And so part of our challenge is how do we create spaces where people can be their authentic selves but sort of agree to disagree, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so as a coach and as an athlete, I, I think it's part of our challenge is how, to be, how we create neutral environments, right? So that every athlete, regardless of their, their age, their race, their religion, their sexual orientation, um, their nation of origin can maximize their potential. Uh, and so in all the training, again, it's, we try to focus on, let's say what we're for instead of what we're against. And so, so much of, of the conversation is about like, what does it mean to be a good teammate? What is sportsmanship? What are, what are the core values that our athletic institutions are striving towards? And if we believe in those things and, and we mean those things, then there's certain types of language and conduct that we should really try to do away with. Um, and so I, you know, I also try to make it a real, really clear to folks that like, I grew up in wrestling, like I use homophobic language growing up. I laughed at the jokes. I know what the culture is like. Um, and so it's not a conversation of judgment, but hopefully trying to find that common ground and understanding that we can all be better. We can all do more for others. Um, so I just think the, the way in which uh, I've always framed these, these trainings and our work um, has really opened a lot of exciting doors and opportunities to work with some pretty exciting athletes. We're talking with Hudson Taylor. He'll be the guest editor of the Washington Blade, a, uh, a very uh, well done um, publication, both in print and online, that uh, gives the 
the uh, gay and lesbian and uh, community an open opportunity to uh, talk about the world, not just politics, but the world of sport. And that's exactly what Hudson Taylor's done, both as a wrestler and an uh, you know, I, I think when you wore that piece on your headgear, the uh, that logo on your headgear, it brought up uh, an opportunity for you to talk about your opinion. Uh, it was an equality sticker for your human rights campaign, but it also opened you up for some backlash from your peers. Can you talk about that? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that... Um, Athletes are not always encouraged to voice um, their support for things outside of sport, right? There's this, there's this common language that we've seen in the last few years, and it's don't be a distraction, right? And so you're okay so long as you focus on, on training and lifting and competing and being a better athlete. But if you focus too much on things outside of your sport, um, that can be discouraged in a number of ways. And so I think, you know, again, when when I first started speaking out, there were certainly a number of my teammates who didn't understand why. <laughs> what are you saying? Why is this important? Why are you distracting us from what we're trying to accomplish as a team? And um, and I understand that, you know, and so ultimately part of what Athlete Ally, why Athlete Ally is what it is today was um, born out of some of those initial conversations that I had with teammates. And really, trying to respect the fact that athletes are athletes first, but also educate folks that, you know, we're not where we should be on so many of these issues. I think that, um, you know, not to <laughs> get on my pet at my soapbox here, but, you know, sport is a, is a gender segregated space, right? So from the moment that I entered a, a wrestling room, I only spend time with other wrestlers. Right. And as a right. result, I learned that what is feminine is bad. And, and so the language, the jokes, the, the things that you dress and wear and talk about are all very systematically um, framed with that kind of gender divide at, at the, as the foundation. And so I think it, you know, it makes sense that, that it was not well received by everybody. But that doesn't mean um, we can't be better. You know, when you know better, you do better. And so I just hope that that sticker and these my work today um, is helping people know better. Hudson Taylor, I guess, and and it's an open opportunity for you to continue your advocacy, to continue your your uh, your mission. I think, and I think it's neat that uh, you've chosen. Uh, to continue your families and for going going back how many generations four or five yeah uh so it's great 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 grandfather to, james hudson taylor yeah <laughs> I, I remember when you and i first discussed that i didn't realize because i just said dude you got a really cool name and uh <laughs> and in the world of radio and television uh, perhaps they used to be made up names now they're more likely to be real names and i just thought hudson taylor was a cool name and uh then you told me the history of it and then i did some research uh, not only on you but on your family and i just so i was absolutely amazed absolutely amazed are you still involved with the huffington post yeah i uh actually just just wrote, you know i write uh, on the huffington post pretty regularly um, the last piece that I wrote about was on um, the prize winnings uh, for men and for male and female athletes, and how there's a real difference in how um, men and women are rewarded at the professional level. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I try to write pretty regularly for Huffington Post. Um, again, I, I think that we don't have enough candid conversations about the areas where we can improve. Um, certainly there are no easy answers or else we would have found solutions for some of these problems long, long ago. But I think, you know, we owe it to ourselves to try to find what, like the, the purest, best sporting world and environment, like what does that look like and how do we get there? Um, so yeah, I mean, that continues to be a driving force for the things that I write, the, the work that I do, um, and everything that Athlete Ally is about. So let me ask you this then: If 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 the challenges are so great, there must be there must be some uh, advocacy and some assistance from the leadership organizations like the USOC, the NCAA, and other organizations. Are you receiving um, 
assistance in getting the message out, uh, in changing behavior and changing perhaps coaching. Uh, the, you know, as, as as you mentioned, you were part of, uh, you know, the jokes. Uh, you laughed at them. You heard the language. We all have been, I would assume most of us anyway, I have been, um, in those situations where we are put uh, in uncomfortable situations, really, uh, when you hear people joke. And a lot of that's because of lack of knowledge, fear, or whatever. Uh, but um, what kind of, has the NCAA really stepped up? Sure. So I, uh, a few years ago, I actually helped co-author an NCAA guide called Champion Respect. Um, and that's a 85 page booklet that they distributed to all coaches and administrators on LGBT best practices. So certainly there's been some thought leadership on what that content should be. I, I do think though, that there's still a, a massive divide in terms of, um, the, uh, implementation of some of those best policies, right? So in a lot of the, the folks that I work with, I, I think there's a great book that everybody should read. It's called The Honor Code. Uh, it talks about how moral revolutions happen. And essentially it says, the way that we change a culture is not by telling people what is right and wrong, but instead by redefining the dominant identity of your audience. And so in all of this work with teams and leagues, um, it's about identifying your core values as a program. And if you can get alignment on those core values, then when non-inclusive, homophobic, sexist, racist language happens, um, you can correct it not by saying, hey, that's not right, but correct it by saying, that's not who we are. And I think that's like the, the driving force of this is, you know, not enough coaches, not enough programs are really explicit about their core values, about their commitment to inclusion. And, and until we become intentional about these things, things are not going to change. Hudson Taylor, well done. You continue your work and uh, doing it well, pressing the uh, issues that face the LGBT community to this day. Uh, in print, in your advocacy, you're speaking. What you you are speaking to a group coming up here uh, as soon as is that right? <laughs> yeah, uh, next week I'll be doing the NBA rookie orientation. So uh, it's the rookie transition program. So all the guys who just got drafted into the NBA, uh, I'll be working with all of them on these issues. So we have um, hour long discussions and breakout groups of ten to fifteen players each. And really just talking talking with them, like, what are your questions? What are your insecurities? What things are you not comfortable with? Like, let's let's have a conversation about it. Um, and those are, you know, really amazing opportunities for, for personal and professional growth because, you know, a lot of these professional athletes are no longer individuals, but they're sort of their own brand now. And they have to think about their fan bases and the sponsorship opportunities and in addition to how to be the best teammate possible. Isn't it amazing what kind of pressures come to a, a young person that is uh, going into the world of professional sports, and the NBA, the NFL, uh, as you know, when they when they sit players down and they talk about the money they're being paid, about investments and and the opportunities uh, to lose all of that money in such a short period of time, but now we're taking a look at their lives and and the way they address each other and the way they. Uh, position themselves in the in the public eye it's fascinating to see it all unfold and i think the nba is doing a great job of leading the way would you agree absolutely they were one of the first leagues to institute one they um they added sexual orientation into their collective bargaining agreement back in 2011 um, they were one of the first leagues if not the first league to institute a mandatory fine if people used derogatory language um which again like there has to like, how do we set the standards? How do we, how do we communicate the expectations? And I think um, so much of the language that is still present in sport happens without anybody saying anything, you know? Oh. Uh, nobody challenges the, the, the language of the locker room. And so I think the NBA in particular has done a really good job of articulating the values that they stand for and making that clear to every player that enters the league. And then policing it. Yeah, absolutely. I love, I love that. You gotta, if you're gonna, you know, put the words out there, you gotta put some uh, some heat behind it, right? I right. Think right. And and so we just um, one of the things that Athlete Ally has been working on is we now have a climate survey for athletic departments. So 
if anybody is listening who's connected to an athletic department and would like to assess the climate of their team or athletic department, we can definitely help with that. But um, we just got some really interesting findings that 85% of the athletes at this one school did not know how to respond when somebody uses an anti-gay slur. And so I think that there's still uh, a real lack of comfort in how people respond to those moments. Uh, and so it's not just in the NBA, but I think it's actually across all of sport from uh, pre-K all the way up through the professional leagues. Hudson, it's always great talking to you and, and uh, we applaud your efforts and uh, surely wish you the best. It's, uh, it's neat to see somebody who is so, so positive in his work and uh, having really some great success in getting the message across and uh, changing some lives, surely changing and opening some, opening some eyes. I think that's, that's even better for me. You're still ranked among the top five pinners in NCAA history, right? I, uh, I, I was pretty good at pinning. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think the record at Maryland will ever be broken, but when you think about it, man, one of the top five pinners in NCAA wrestling history is pretty darn good. We uh, appreciate the time today as the founding executive director of Athlete Ally. I know you've got things you need to get to do uh, or need to get done today, and we'll get let you get to them. Appreciate you uh, uh, talking to us about this really neat opportunity with the uh, with the Washington Blade. I think it's terrific, and uh, the, I can't. I really can't wait to see it. The third annual sports edition coming out August twenty first. Our guest today, the special guest editor, Hudson Taylor of Athlete Ath Athlete Ally. Hudson, Thank you so much for having me. Good talking with you, pal. Thanks for the time. Cheers.